All right, guys. Well, we are back to winter time. It is another snowy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where we have stumbled into... <coughs> have we made it six days into 2023? I think it is Friday, January 6th, 2023. And uh, being Friday... It should be time for my first ecological meltdown roundup rant of 2023 where I, as I do every Friday, uh, check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com for their weekly cavalcade of catastrophe raining down upon this planet. <coughs> but guys, you know, it was a, it's been a holiday week and... Uh, Give, I'm going to cut Red a little bit of slack. He's doing a, more of these top 10 stories roundups from 2022. And a lot of the stuff he talks about already we've been talking about recently. Uh, a lot of the stuff about Lula taking over and saving the rainforest and goodbye bozo nero all that stuff so anyway guys we're going to uh do something i don't do very often and we're gonna pass on mangabay.com and come up with another chronicle of the collapse uh, but before i do i do want to mention one story cause this probably has something to do with Lula saving the Amazon rainforest. You know, Lula, uh, he was one of the big cheerleaders of the Belo Monte Dam, one of the most indefensible environmental boondoggles. Uh, in the Amazon rainforest here in the 21st century. Every bit is uh, damaging to the rainforest as anything Bozo Nero did. And I personally see no reason why he's going to change. But, uh, you know, usually when they're talking, when we're talking on Manga Bay, we're talking about these big ass uh, hydroelectric projects. I think there's somewhere around 40 of these mega dams. So people are uh, always talking and even doomers that I know defending small hydropower projects. You know where you only dam a little creek and a few acres I guess to save the planet. I have always hit the bullshit detected button on these damning, a, unless you're a beaver, and I guess even if you are a beaver looking at the tundra today, uh, you know, damning a free-flowing stream, I don't give a damn whether it's a little creek or a major river. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's planet eating now, you know, it's, it's the fine line between planet nibbling and planet eating. <coughs> so I just want to touch on this one story before we head over to our, our other, uh, chronicle of the collapse. Series of small dams pose big cumulative risk to Amazon's fish and people. Small hydropower plants and small-scale fish farming in the Brazilian Amazon basin are often thought to cause negligible environmental harm, yet a new study reveals their cumulative damage is greatly underestimated and can, in fact, be more impactful than large dams. Dwindling fish populations caused by the construction of thousands of small dams 
has impacted the livelihoods of millions of indigenous and riverside people who depend on fishing for food income and culture, small hydropower plants and aquaculture farming are encouraged and will still be encouraged under Lula, as my guess, through economic incentives, can you say subsidies, simple licensing procedures, and loose requirements for environmental impact assessments before construction, more than 350 dam proposals in the Amazon Basin are now under consideration and 98 medium-sized dams. Me 98 medium-sized dams will be prioritized in Brazil as of next year, ensuring the construction of hydropower plants will continue. And of course, hydropower is one of the uh, poster children of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, holding up hydropower as uh, one of the ways we're going to save the planet from fossil fuels. It is one of the bright green lives of the 21st century. There is nothing, nothing clean or green or environmentally friendly about hydropower. I don't give a damn whether it's damming a creek or damming the Amazon River. Damning is damning. <clears throat> anyway, enough of that. So, uh, since I'm not doing a full rant, I'm going to come over here to this l little lefty news roundup over at Common Dreams, where we're actually going to hear again, and I've mentioned, I've had other rants by this fellow, Tom Englehart, who is also uh, the head cook and bottle washer over at Tom Dispatch. And... Uh, <clears throat> Again, <coughs> before I dive into that, well, I will just make a few comments. Th those of you who know me know what my comments are going to be about this. Um, uh, about the essential flaw in Tom's rant here. But uh, I just kind of wherever you hear the words climate change, global warming, whatever, insert the word humans, and you would have my rant. And uh, so Tom Englehart's uh, latest rant this week, where, oh where, are the screaming headlines about planetary destruction Ending the world as we have known it, whether in a matter of weeks or in slow motion over countless decades, should, it seem to me, evoke the screaming headlines of our times. Yes. Uh, so what he does, I'm, uh, in the beginning of this article, and this isn't a real original rant, is what he did is he looked, this was actually the December 14th issue of the actual old-fashioned New York Times newspaper that uh, he went through the stories on the, on the front page of the New York Times looking for one mention of the, uh, you, you know, the collapse of a planet. Uh, so he goes through, you know, there's stories on inflation and some cryptocurrency collapse. And I anyway, you know, as he says, these are all fine stories uh, that he kind of just glanced over while he was having breakfast. 
And so then he starts going through the newspaper and at the bottom of page 12 of the New York Times on December 14th, he finds one article uh, on climate change, uh, which of course climate change is the one aspect of the collapse of a planet that is going to get mentioned in the New York Times. So it's, uh, it was an article which I think I, I'm sure I mentioned and other doomers have about it raining in Antarctica, that it is getting so warm in Antarctica that it is actually raining instead of snowing in Antarctica. So this story showing up at the bottom of page 12 uh, and we're going to pick up his rant about a third of the way through there. Um, and know that, you know, that article about it raining in, in Antarctica obviously was not a headline intended to blow me or any other reader away, storms heading northward or not. Admittedly, above it was a dramatic enough photo of what looked like a mountain of ice and snow with the subhead, a September heat wave in Greenland caused the most severe melting of the island's ice sheets for that time of year in more than four decades of satellite monitoring. That's the, you know, the cut line for the photo. And as with that caption, here was the weird thing. More or less every other line of the, you know, the actual story might, with a little interpretive rewriting, have become a blazing front page headline focusing us on a planet that is only expected to get ever hotter in 2023 and beyond given that, and this should shock any of us, the last eight years have been the warmest on record. Um, Try just this random line from the article, for instance, quote, Over the past four decades, the region has warmed at four times the global average rate. And, and I'm not, they were talking about Antarctica and Greenland in the piece, so I'm not sure if they're talking, okay, I think they're talking about Greenland at this point. Over the past four decades, the region has warmed at four times the global average rate, not two or three times, as had often been reported, scientists in Finland said this year, some parts of the Arctic are warming it up to seven times the global rate, they said. Close quote. Um... So, let's sum it up this way. Yes, the slowing of inflation was the page one story of, you know, of December 14th, and that certainly mattered to Americans, fearful of how a possible recession might level their lives, and headline story Two was, in a sense, the very opposite, a deflationary tale of how, at his now collapsed cryptocurrency exchange, FTX, Sam Bankman-Fried had already emptied the savings of a striking number of his customers. Still, if you stop to think about it, there on page 12 was 
what could be considered the most crucial inflationary and deflationary story of our time, maybe of all time. I know, I know, the focus of the piece was an assumably wonky Arctic report card that has been produced by scientists for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration since 2006. Still, while inflation, or even the Fed's attempts to reduce it by eternally upping interest rates, could lead to an economic disaster that would damage the lives of so many Americans, nothing short of nuclear war could damage our lives the way climate change is likely to. Honestly, barring some future surprise, shouldn't it qualify daily as the headline story of our lifetime, potentially of any lifetime? After all, whether in the melting rainy Arctic or just about anywhere else, what we're watching is the potential destruction of the only world humanity has ever known. And so the story is the, not the potential, the ongoing destruction of the only world humanity has ever known, which, uh, you know, the way I uh, am reading this, climate change is just one of the ingredients of the stew. Because when you peel back the onion of climate change, you find humans lurking at the bottom of it all. Uh, but however you want to uh, want to read it, whether you're you're still uh, lulled into the lefty uh, greeny thinking, like you know Tom Engelhardt is a major uh, lefty greeny. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> okay, what we're watching is the potential destruction of the only world humanity has ever known. And when it comes to global warming, again, and when it comes to humans, we are not talking about a possible future crash from which as in the Great Depression of 1980, 1929, or the Great Recession of 2009, we can recover in a limited number of years. We're talking about the potential for a forever crash. The Greatest Depression of all time that lurks all too obviously in our future and is already beginning to clobber us. My point being, the news is not just a matter of what is reported, but how and where it shows up, of what is emphasized and what isn't. This, to my mind, is especially true with the subject that should, in fact, grip us all daily, that worst version of inflation ever. And yes, the temperature on this planet is indeed rising precipitously thanks to the continuing use and abuse of fossil fuels and the release of staggering quantities of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. And that in the end, is likely to cause harm of an unimaginable sort, the kind that newspapers simply are not used to covering. And, and I would say here, guys, that I, I'm beginning to think that the mainstream media is 
uh, I, I'm going to disagree here with Tom, and it's probably because of the news feed that I get fed every morning, which is not the same news feed that 99% of people uh, opening up Yahoo News or Google News every morning get. Because, you know, the algorithms are feeding me a lot more climate change stories than they are the average uh, normie. Uh, obviously, I understand this, but climate change, uh, you know, I've had a rant on this. It, it's getting so common in, in the mainstream media. It, it's actually become one of the ways the coverage of climate change, the sole coverage on climate change and nothing else uh, it is actually starting to mask all of the other stories that are nowhere being mentioned. Obviously, the number one story being overpopulation. I don't know if I have ever heard Tom, Tom Englehart mention the word overpopulation. Uh, so anyway, again, I am uh, not 100% disagreeing with Tom here. I know what he's saying, but Tom is also being blinded to, uh, to, to the real problem on this planet, which is even beyond overpopulation is humans. But anyway, I'm going to shut up now. I think we all understand where Sam Mitchell stands on this, uh, uh, on this topic, and we're going to get back to Tom and let him at least explain uh, why climate change is going to bat clean up. Where were we? Okay. <clears throat> In an all-too-literal sense, that is, we are creating hell on earth. And yet, despite the efforts of figures like the remarkable Greta Thunberg or Bill McKibben or the Sunrise Movement, never heard of the Sunrise Mo Movement, or other groups that have focused tellingly on climate change, despite the increasingly immediate extreme weather it's been producing from Pakistan to China, South Sudan to Chile, Europe, and the United States. Global warming remains a largely off the front page story. Uh, mind you, the extremes of national, if not global, weather are regularly reported, often with remarkable enthusiasm, just largely without the necessary context. For instance, I watched the NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt, and one thing you can say about his show is that he loves extreme and extremely bad weather. In news terms, severe storm conditions sweeping across this country, often for days at a time, are pure attention getters. Uh, such storms are presented as both weather reports and remarkable dramas. Tornadoes, floods, snow and ice, the hottest or coldest weather, as they spread damage of all sorts across the U.S., on occasion, Holt or his surrogates will, in passing, mention climate change or, on rarer occasions, even have a separate piece on the phenomenon. But, at best, it is the equivalent of a passing footnote. And yet, sadly enough, the fossil-fuelized overheating of our world and its effects via weather events causing increasing damage, including ever fiercer fires, the melting of ever more glaciers and ice sheets, ever more devastating droughts, or the record flooding 
of country simply does not register in the way it should, not in a way that might make some difference in how we think about and deal with this planet of ours. Uh, anyway, guys, I guess I did not realize how long this uh, rant was. Uh, Yes, if climate change, or perhaps I mean climate anxiety, is already part of your worldview, as for instance it evidently is with Gen Z, and you're searching for news about it, you'll always find some, blah, blah, blah. Uh, then he goes through of, uh, you know, a few of the stories that if you Google this, if you take the extra step of Googling it, uh, it will turn up. Uh, and he mentions, you know, the record, uh, the record use of coal, that we burned more coal last year than any year in history. And then uh, talking about how companies like ExxonMobil and Chevron continue to make unprecedented fortunes off the future devastation of our planet. In uh, inflation terms, the coal report could not have been a more nightmarish tale, and yet the inflated use of coal and the inflated profits that go with it really don't qualify as front page news, even if they help ensure that we humans will burn ourselves off the planet. Yes. Uh, anyway, guys, just for, I'm going to put the link on here and you can read this entire rant um, all right I don't believe it of course I don't mean to suggest that such a reporting phenomenon is restricted to climate change and then he goes off into the military budget good God the mil what was it 858 billion dollars uh, this year, which is 45 billion dollars more than uh, the Biden administration even asked for. Uh, and then when you add in all of the other stuff not counted uh, in that, it, American taxpayers are actually spending 1.4 trillion dollars. Uh, so he goes running down that uh, rabbit hole. Uh, okay, let's wrap it up. Uh, Tom Englehart, so he gets, uh, he gets a little back on track. Tom does tend to ramble a little bit, kind of like I tend to ramble a little bit. It's kind of why I like the guy. Uh, yes, such stormy news exists, but the question as 2023 begins is, where is it? Why aren't such stories eternally screaming headlines in the mainstream? Looking back on the history of humanity, of us, something regularly jumps out, at me at least, in this era, we have figured out two quite different ways to act in a fashion that once was left to the gods, something that you would think might be eternally headline-making material. We have discovered how to potentially destroy ourselves and end life as we know it on this planet in double time. The first way is, of course, via nuclear weapons, the one kind of disaster that could actually cut short 
climate change by potentially creating a planetary nuclear winter that might starve billions of us. And ha as has been true for decades, the great, and who knows why they're still called that, the great powers are capable of functionally blowing this planet to hell and back, as are some lesser powers like India and Pakistan, and not faintly satisfied with that, in the coming decades, our country is planning to invest a couple of trillion more of your taxpayer dollars in modernizing the American nuclear arsenal. Only the other week, well, anyway, skipping ahead, and yes, all of this has in some fashion been reported. <clears throat> uh, still, neither nuking the planet nor overheating it beyond compare gets anything like the attention it deserves. Ending the world as we have known it, whether in a matter of weeks or in slow motion over countless decades should, it seems to me, evoke the screaming headlines of our times, and I can't help eternally wondering not where the reporting on such subjects is, but where those headlines are when it comes to potentially the greatest versions of both depression and inflation ever. There you go. So, uh, <laughs> good old Tom. He's been, uh, he, he's been, uh, screaming, uh, at the, how many years has Tom Englehart been out there, uh, stirring up the lefties, preaching to the choir, which is exactly what, uh, I'm doing here, and uh, not that anybody uh, to the right of uh, AOC uh, has ever heard of Tom Englehart, but uh, Tom knows damn well why uh, the New York Times isn't printing this story uh, on the front page every day of the week, uh, because the clueless moron normies do not want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. And if the New York Times actually gave the greatest, uh, the biggest story in the history of humanity, daily front page attention, the New York Times would collapse in about a week. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up because uh, I think I need to go uh, clean out some cat litter pans while I still can. Bye, guys.